Welcome to Inside Texas Football, powered by InsideTexas.com. We got a big one today, Justin. <laughs> Xavier, Xavier Filsame, the latest flip. Merry, Merry Flipmas, everybody, because uh, it, it's, it's official now. This is one of the best talents in the entire country. You and I both agree behind the scenes. We don't care what the rankings have him as. This is a five-star caliber dude. Amen. Amen. Profile through the roof. Justin, what makes Xavier Filsame so highly recruited? You've got athletic players. Then you've got athletes. Then you have another category, and you, you understand this. They're called plus athletes. They're the guys that are just a little bit faster, quicker, and twitchier than the rest <laughs> of that of, of those things. And so it 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 Phil, Phil Sume is that guy. He's the essence of that guy. 6'1, 190, 195 pounds. I mean, he – he passes the eye test before you ever watch film, you know, not necessarily get off the bus first guy, but boy, he stands out. I'll never forget seeing him last summer. You know, Texas was a little late to the party in this recruitment. Mm -hmm. And I remember seeing him last summer and I'm thinking, why is it Texas on this kid? He's just an athletic freak. And they had had a couple other safeties identified and they were pursuing, you know, Corey and Gibson, a couple other guys. And, and then, you know, a few months later, they, 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 I believe they had seen him in tape or seen tape or they'd gone by practice. And it's like, OK, you this is a guy you got to get. <laughs> and so and what, what usually happens, Landon, is when they come so late to the party, it's hard to recoup all that slack. Yeah. That relationship time that you had to build, it, it, it takes a little extra effort. Cultivation well, credit, process, yeah. Yes, yeah. and credit to Steve Sarkeesian and and and, and Pete Kwiatkowski and, and uh, Blake Gideon. They were persistent. You know, he's so highly recruited because he can do a little of everything. We've talked about this before, you and I. This safety room needed an injection of athleticism. Mm -hmm. Bill Sume brings that. And like, then some. <laughs> you, yeah, you needed aggressiveness. So who'd you get? You went to Jurassic Park and you pulled the, the nicest raptor out of West Iberia, Louisiana. Now you need that injection of that, just that big athlete that can sit there and, and he's rangy and can just go from sideline to sideline and diagnose stuff. That's Xavier Filsume. This kid is big. And so at the end of the day, Texas could not have done any better. Like, I honestly feel like, you know, they were in such a good spot with Corey and Gibson over the summer. And when that didn't happen and he wound up ending up at Clemson, I thought, man, it's going to be tough to find that other spot. Jordan Johnson Rebel had already kind of jumped into the cycle. The IMG Academy kid, early enrollee, going to be on campus in like another week. <laughs> right. And so, you know, they, they had him, but they needed that, that he needed that, that counterpart. And right. that's this guy. That's what Phil Sume brings. That's why he's so highly recruited. And that's why Texas went balls to the wall the last few months to make sure this kid ended up staying in state for the Texas Longhorns. Big time. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel also, guys. This is uh, the best, best and most efficient way to help us out. Like we always say, yeah. totally free and worth every single penny. Um, and real quick, too, a, a word from our sponsor. If you have a personal injury, call Andre the Lawyer. 214-444-8808. He's located in Dallas, Texas, and he helps injured Longhorns just like you. Uh, car wrecks, slips and falls, 18-wheeler accidents, on-the-job injuries, and wrongful death, all of that. Andre's a proud Inside Texas reader, been a longtime supporter of the program, and once again, if you're hearing this message or seeing it, however, he wants to help you. 214-444-8808. That's 214-444-8808. Justin, uh, let's just let's let's talk a little bit more about about our guy Xavier Filsame here. Yeah, you know, the, dive deep. Yeah, because this is important. It's 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 well worth the time, and uh, I think folks who aren't well aware of this situation are very soon going to be and going to be very excited about it. Um, talk to me about so this was we, we talked about Mary, Mary Flipness, right? Obviously, yes. he's flipping from the University of Florida. There's a reason for that. Uh, I was committed to the U of F. I believe April 13th, something like that. It's, it's I think been, it was in the springtime. You might be yeah, right. Yeah. It's, been, it's been quite a while. Um, how did how did this this process from Florida to Texas, how'd that come about? Talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, the the way that transpired is it's you know, like I said, Texas got into it a little bit late. But once they did, once they established that that foundation, it, it grew from there. 
But he was – let me tell you something. This was a very loyal kid to Florida, very loyal, uh, to a point where we, we – at first we didn't know if he was even potentially going to consider flipping. He really mm-hmm. liked the staff there. He loved – the, pre- the previous DB coach, he, he really clicked with those guys. He had family and friends from Florida. So there was some familiarity there as well. And then Florida's 2023 just wasn't what people thought it was going to be. You're not going to lose a recruit over a game or two, but you can lose a recruit over the course of a, of a season with expectations that barely merited. You know, I don't know if they were 500 or just a little bit over 500 this year, but it, yeah. Billy Napier was in, didn't have the best season. They, the Florida right. did not – they didn't put together the best piece of work. That first game of the season against Utah where they just got drubbed, that, it, it kind of went downhill from there. They had a few shining moments through the, through the, through the season, but it wasn't what Phil Sumay was looking for. Right. Then his position coach was removed. That, Great. I felt like, was the domino. I felt like once that happened – this thing got real. And it was probably already in the works before that, but that made it even more real. And so Texas gets involved. They finally get him on campus, not just for the official visit that happened last weekend, mm-hmm. but for it ha- for um they finally got the guy. He came in three weeks before actually for a for a one day unofficial. Got to watch practice, got to hang out with the coaches, some of the players. And that was, to me, I think that was as big as the visit. Like Mm -hmm. the visit, you get to take the pictures, you get to put on the uniform, you get to go eat nice places, you get get to get, you know, wined and dined. But he, I think he was sold on practice. I think he was sold watching the group work together. And this, in a Texas practice, you'll notice these guys are are aligned. You know, I hate to bring up a, a Tom Hermanism, but alignment is still a real thing. And, and I think Sark actually has that without having to say it. Phil Sumay felt that. And he knows he can – here's the biggest impact. He knows he can come in and play early. There you and go. you, yep. you want to get a five-star's attention? Show him the depth chart. Mm-hmm. Show him how he'll be used. Rinse, repeat. Yep. And that's what happened with Phil Sumay. And that's a, ultimately I feel like that – and it didn't hurt that his other Florida commit buddy from, from Louisiana, Wardell Mack, fellow man of the secondary – had flipped previously. Wardo Mack was a little helpful in that regard too. And so at the end of the day, Phil Samay turns into a Longhorn. I, I want to talk before we wrap this up too. I want to, I want people to understand the importance of Corey Raymond, who is, you know, the, the, the DB coach that came over from LSU once thought of to be the best defensive backs coach in the entire country. He was, he was, he was Xavier's DB coach or the, the soon to be one officially at Florida. Um, but you, you mentioned once he got to just kind of be in into the environment, the practice atmosphere, being around the guys, right? You you get you got the media perce- perspective uh, and right. perception really of of yeah. what a, what an organization or in this particular case a program is. You've got the fans' perspective of what the program is, and then you've got your own peers' perspective of what the program is. But nobody can really sell you a program like the players can themselves. And I think, we, you know, we hear people talk about this uh, from time to time, but I don't know that it necessarily gets the attention that it that it deserves. Uh, and once again, in this case, just having a guy like Xavier, who is as highly touted as he is, who knows exactly what he wants, once he gets to to, to see and feel the, the practice environment, and if, that's the, if that was really, you know, what, what sold him, like you're saying, to me, if you're a Texas fan, how do you not love that? How do you not love just exactly. like understanding, okay, like what these guys got going on right now? Like they really got it going on. And, and the these these players like Xavier, they feel that and they want to be a part of it, right? Do you think that's accurate? It's an energy. Yes. I, I think that the, this generation calls it a vibe. Mm-hmm. And, and that's exactly what it's presented as. You, you, you made a great point. People don't talk up that angle very often. Fan, you know why? Because fans want to hear so and so kid committed to their school because he loves the school. <laughs> yeah, and I'm not saying he doesn't. I'm telling you, most of these kids they 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 wind up loving the school and the program, mm-hmm. and because that's what fans they loved it. So right. that makes it relatable for them. But sometimes these are business decisions. Sometimes these are feeling gut feelings. You know, it's it University of Texas could be for anybody or it could be for nobody. 
But for a kid like Phil Sume, you put yourself in that environment, that vibe, that culture that Sark's committed, that energy, it becomes addicting. It becomes enticing. And you can tell, and then you see them run off a 12 and one season with a third seed in the college football playoff. And all of a sudden, like everything you saw goes to the head, gels, and now it becomes a real reality. Now it's, okay, this is this is a real place. This these are real relationships. This is a real vibe. And so you you made a good point that I, I like that that you know fans want you know for the love of the burnt orange, love of the in-state. Well, Phil Simay, I don't I don't even think was born and I'm not sure he was born in Texas. I know they had a lot of Florida connections. Mm-hmm. Some kids commit to Texas, they were Longhorns from the second they were born. <laughs> yeah. Some kids come along in a different way, but at the end of the day, they all wear the same color. Burn right. orange, and Phil Sime is a guy that 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 took in the entire process. It wasn't just about you know him playing early and an impact and a vibe. It's the academic standing. It's you know getting in early, early enrollee. Want to get get your feet wet early, and so you know Phil Sime, I think made the right choice. I think he felt it in his heart. Probably, I think this thing was probably done three or four weeks ago, okay. but they still needed to to, to be t- uh, thorough. And, and, and that's what him and his family have done. Give their family a ton of credit. His dad has been instrumental throughout all of this. Great, great people, great family. And so Phil Sume to Texas, it, it just, once he saw the writing on the wall and then he saw it actually implemented on a field, it, it's hard to turn that down, Landon. It's hard to say, it's yeah. hard to go from a Florida commit where it looks like, Napier is going to be on the hot seat the second next season starts. He loses his DB coach too. Man, have you seen the trajectory of this place? Wait a minute. My family can watch me. It's a two hour drive. Mm -hmm. All those data points start to add up to a theory, to a, to a, to to an analysis. And that's why we have Phil Sumato, Texas. Checking all the right boxes, man. This is this is a fun one. This is exciting, and it's, it's been it's been fun to cover and speculate over. But now that it's officially hmm. done, I'm I'm calling it the, the five star flip from Florida. Xavier Filsame is officially your newest Texas Longhorn. Justin, thanks for your time, man. And once again, don't forget, guys, like and subscribe to the channel. Got a lot more coming. I, th- I got a feeling we'll be talking to you guys pretty soon here with our early National Signing Day right around the corner. Flip miss season, all the all the all the above, you know, <laughs> where we are, we are in it right now. Yeah. Okay, uh, it's totally free, and what like we always say, it's worth every penny. Talk to you guys soon.